We begin with those wild winds that prompted us to declare a first alert weather day. Powerful gusts sending trees crashing down onto homes, cars, and even the Bay Bridge. I mean, if you were outside, you definitely felt it. This is a live look at the huge backup headed westbound right now. And some of that damage that we see too on the right of your screen is the reason why that large tree that came crashing down right in front of the tunnel on Yerba Buena Island. And Amanda, amazingly, no one was hurt. And one of our co-workers actually shot this video on his way into work. When most of the lanes in the San Francisco were blocked, we're now told Caltrans has cleared most of that debris and only the far right lane remains closed. All right, well, we sent out our team to have coverage from Fremont up the peninsula and beyond. But we begin with First Alert Chief Meteorologist Paul Hagen tracking these wild winds. And Paul, what is even next for us? We're going to see the winds remaining gusty as we head through the rest of tonight. And you can see just our camera top of Salesforce Tower, usually a pretty stable perspective, really bouncing around. And white caps, I mean, just widespread across San Francisco Bay. Let's take a look at some of the highest gusts that we have recorded so far. And these are not typos, a 73 mile an hour gust recorded to Ocean Beach. SFO recorded a 68 mile an hour gust. That was right at four o'clock. A 61 mile an hour gust at Oakland Airport. 55 miles an hour at San Jose. So 58 miles an hour is the threshold at which the National Weather Service categorizes thunderstorm winds as being severe. Just the normal wind across the Bay Area has reached or exceeded that level in a number of locations, even on the lower end of the spectrum, widespread 40 to 45 mile an hour gusts. A high wind warning continues along the coast and in San Francisco through nine o'clock tomorrow morning. The gusts are going to be potentially up to 65 miles an hour right along the coastline. Be prepared for power outages and more tree damage. And for the rest of the Bay Area, it's a wind advisory that continues through 1 p.m. Wednesday. The winds might not be quite as strong, but down trees, branches, and power outages are still going to be possible through at least early afternoon on Wednesday. And even once this expires, it's still going to be breezy for the rest of the day. Then our focus shifts to the other side of this winter storm system, but potential for some snow in the higher elevations of the Santa Clara Hills and the Santa Cruz Mountains, a winter weather advisory from 10 a.m. Wednesday through 10 a.m. Thursday, but in all likelihood, the bulk of the accumulating snow is going to occur after that Thursday into Thursday night, talking about in general one to three inches of snow. But of course, that really depends on your specific elevation. The rest of the Bay Area, we're going to see a good chance of rain as we head through Thursday, Thursday night into early Friday and then a little break in the action Saturday before more rain chances head our way for the second half of the weekend and into next week. We're going to track it all hour by hour with Futurecast in just a few minutes. And Paul, one of the hardest hit spots has been Redwood City, where we've seen and heard multiple reports of trees crashing into homes just like this one. What a mess. Our Max mm. Darrow is there live for us. So Max, what are you seeing at this home? How much damage did they get? The damage is quite extensive. I mean, you can see how large this tree is. And when the wind toppled it over, you can see that it ripped it out of the ground right here, ripping up some of the concrete with it. And it's about 50 or 60 feet tall and went right down in the middle of this house, crashing through this window and across the entirety of the house. One of the neighbors was home at the time of this. He described the sound as something truly incredible, really amazed by the power of nature in a moment like this. This video will give you some more closer looks at just the extent of the damage here at this home in Redwood City. This isn't the only one. We've seen several homes that have had trees come down, but nothing quite like this one. Listen to what this neighbor had to say. It's uh, pretty amazing how powerful that tree can be, right? It's crushed that house next door. Her whole ceiling was caved in. All the support beams were crushed by the tree. It was pretty impressive. So again, back now live, you can see how large this tree is. Just for some perspective, if you come back here, this is the base of the tree. I'm about five foot ten. This is several feet up close to maybe even 10 feet up there. So you can see how large this tree is and how big of a problem this is going to cause for this homeowner. Good news here, despite all of this mess that they're going to have to deal with, we're learning that the homeowner is OK. A little bit shaken up naturally and understandably so, but we're not hearing that anybody was hurt in this incident. Uh, but again, tons of incidents across Redwood City and the greater peninsula as people continue to deal with the aftermath of these extreme winds here in the Bay Area. Ryan. Well, yeah, thanks, Max. I mean, the size and enormity of that tree is just amazing mm -hmm. and at least some good news to report. At least the homeowners are okay. Absolutely. Thank goodness for that. Max, thank you so much. And across the Bay in Fremont, another powerful gust knocked a tree down onto an apartment complex. This happened on Maori Avenue, just west of 238. Our very own Jose Martinez there is live. So, Jose, the first question, did everyone get out okay? Apparently they did. And 
I think this is a very dramatic scene. Ryan, look at this tree right here. I mean, I don't know how we got to this area. Actually, Jim is all the way on the other side of his showing. He can show us how big of a damage is this? This is affecting not only one, but two apartment complexes here in Freeport. I'm gonna get out of the shot because I really want you to look at this tree and how the impact is very showing you, showing us exactly what has been happening in this area over the last few hours. It was very complicated to get to this place. Neighbors are still afraid. We were able to talk to some of them. And as you can see in this part, uh, the whole base of the tree. This is a very dramatic scene, and this is what one of the neighbors told us. As I turned into the complex, I noticed the trees were blowing crazy, mm -hmm. like crazy. And the tree to the right, I saw it just crashing down, falling. And I actually witnessed, first time ever in my life, that you were there. That I've ever seen a tree right before my eyes just break and snap and just tumble. And it's going to get worse. Right, and that tree is this one right here. Rachel lives on the other side. And as you can see, Jim, before we leave, I want you to show that other side. You can see all the apartments that have been affected on the other side of this apartment complex. Now, what we are seeing so far is they've been cleaning up the other side and they're probably going to come to this side tomorrow. We're going to, of course, going to keep you updated, updated on that. Uh, now back to you, Ryan. Uh, Jose, real quick, how, how tall is that tree? Because just giving your perspective and showing that roof system, I mean, it looks enormous. I Listen, I could try to show you walking up there as much as I can, but... It is pretty big. I know Jim is telling me not to do that. Ryan, I don't know what the measure of this tree will be, but it's pretty big. And actually, like I said, it's affecting two apartment complexes. It's a pretty a big damage. Uh, some of the neighbors, neighbors left the apartments on time. And as you can see on this other side, there's also impact. Some of these trees, we were talking to Rachel. She was telling us that before this happened, some of the neighbors have already gone to the apartment, the resident services, to tell them about the status of these trees in this community. As you can see, a bunch of trees everywhere. And, of course, it's a concern. And we still have more time with this wind. It's not over. So, of course, we're going to stay here and we're going to see how they're going to recover from this. Back to you. Uh, are, are, yeah, when the photographer uh, widened now, we can see that perspective. So uh, be careful up there. Thanks. Thanks, Jose. Those trees just crushing mm. down so many homes in our area. Well, there is a shelter in place in a Novato neighborhood where the wind knocked down multiple high voltage power lines. Wilson Avenue is blocked in both directions from Hanson Road to Doris Avenue. One person we spoke with can't get back to his home now and worries about his food spoiling. Well, it's only a problem if it lasts too long because I have a freezer full of, of fish that I don't want to spoil. <laughs> That's what the main thing, you know. And it's good fish. It's really good fish, yeah. It must be really good fish. At last check, about an hour ago, more than 71,000 PG&E customers had lost power. Nearly half are on the peninsula, followed by about 17,000 in the South Bay. So you can stay with CBS News Bay Area for continuing first alert weather coverage throughout this newscast and throughout the night.